Cut. Is that all right for you, boss? Yeah, look good. Okay, now let's move in for an insert. Thank you, Dave. Very good, just relax. Oh. Well? <laughs> How do you like it? It's beautiful. How do you feel now? I'll be all right, Maggie. Well, you will be if you ever stop thinking about that poor woman. I keep trying, believe me, but I... I just can't seem to get her out of my head. Well, this should help. Oh, they are beautiful. Are we going to use them all? Yes, a different one in each shot. Maggie, I... I just can't help thinking that I should have talked to the police. What you saw, lots of people saw. But I was the only one in front. That man... Why did he leave like that? I'm sure he was with her. And the way he looked at me. At times like this, we always imagine the most awful things. I didn't imagine it. That I know. I did not imagine it. Look, if I called the police, they might come here. Would you? I know I'd feel a lot better if I could just tell them. Sarah. Sarah. The men from the police department are here. This is Miss Cornell. How do you Detective do? Detective Stepanek, Miss Cornell. How do you do? This is Inspector Brody. Ms. Knowlton indicated that you think the woman that was killed this morning in the subway was pushed in front of the train. Oh, I beg your pardon? The subway this morning. Can you tell me exactly what you saw? Oh, well, I'm, uh, I'm not really sure. Sarah! What makes you think she was pushed? Anything you can tell us might help. It's all such a muddle. You see, it happened so fast, and there were so many people standing around there that... Well, I'm afraid I really don't know anymore. But, Sarah, what about the man? A man? Can you describe him? Uh, no, not really. How tall was he? Well, he was, uh, about your size, I guess. How about his clothes? What color suit was he wearing? Oh, well, uh, he had on a raincoat. I couldn't see it. How about his hair? He was wearing a hat. I couldn't see that either. You see, he had his hat pulled down and his, uh, collar was turned up. I'm, I'm awfully sorry. I, I'm afraid I really can't help, but... I suppose I shouldn't have even called, but I'm awfully sorry. It's all in the day's work, Miss Cornell. Yes. Very uh, pleasant break in the routine, as a matter of fact. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but she was so sure about what she saw. It happens. You'd be surprised the stories we get from some witnesses. Well, you see, she lost her husband about four months ago, and I, I thought she was getting over it, but obviously she, she isn't. I'm terribly sorry. No problem. Well, thank you for coming. You're welcome. Sarah, I don't understand you. Maggie. That man, the older one. He's the one from the station. The one who pushed that woman. Oh, honey, I know you've had a terrible shock, but you can't tell me that an inspector of homicide is going around pushing women under subway cars. Maggie, didn't you see the way he looked at me? <gasps> honey, you can't believe by the sheerest coincidence that the same man... Of course not. That's just it. It's not a coincidence. He knew I'd seen him do it. That's why he came here to warn me. Oh, don't you see that, Maggie? Well, I see that you're very upset. The police won't believe anything I tell them now, will they? I don't know what to say to you, but I think we'd better skip your spot this afternoon. No, no, no. No, we can use the uh, airline commercial and do your stuff tomorrow. I, I can't just forget about this. I've, I've got to do something. Well, why don't, uh, why don't you sleep on it? I mean, you said yourself that you didn't have a really good look at the man's face. Why don't, why don't you sleep on it? And if you still feel the same way tomorrow, then I'll sleep on it. Now, why don't you and I go out and have a martini and a nice, quiet lunch at a nice, relaxing restaurant? I'd love to, Maggie, but I've got to pick up my car at the garage, and I think now that I have the time, I'll 
pick up Chris at school and take him to Willoughby's for lunch. He'd like that. Good, that's better still. Do you want one of the boys to take you in in a car? Oh, no. No, I'll get a cab. Thank you. Maggie, you know how to... Oh, go on. Get dressed and get out of here. Please. <laughs> Right you talk to other witnesses? Anything else to suggest it wasn't a suicide? No. Nothing except for the fact that there wasn't any identification in her purse. We'll get the report on the prints shortly and go through the usual routine. Good. What made you come by today? Well, I thought it might be interesting. I was getting pretty bored hanging around the house. Serves you right for coming to the office at all. I don't know why you're not on a lake a hundred miles away from here fishing. Well, I've been thinking about it. Hey, don't think about it. Do it. If anybody ever deserved a vacation, it's you, Joe. Okay, Doctor. I'll try not to bug you anymore. All right. Good morning, sister. Am I too early? Not at all. It's wonderful that you were able to manage the time to take Christopher to lunch. Have you told him yet? Right after you phoned. Oh. He's very excited. Oh, great. Well, I'll have him back by about, uh, 1.30. That'll be fine. Christopher! Mommy! <laughs> Mommy! Hi, honey. Hey, are you ready for lunch? Uh-huh. Christopher, there's your jacket. Thank you. Have a lovely time. Thank you, sister. Now the same sort I had there last time, with the marshmallow and everything. <laughs> yes. You can have the same dessert. With the marshmallow and everything. Sweetheart, don't eat so fast. Nobody's going to take it away from you. Miss Cornell, telephone call for you. Oh, thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. Julie. Well, Maggie's the only one who knows where I am. They must have changed the shooting schedule. I'll be right back on. Which one, Julie? Oh, uh, use that phone. Uh, it's line one. Hello? Hello? Maggie? Hello? <laughs> Line one. Oh, quite sure. Line one. There's no one on it. They must have hung up. Oh. Well, it was probably Miss Knowlton. She's the only one who knows where I am. I'll call her back. It... it wasn't a woman. It, it was a gentleman. A man? Yes. It was a man on the phone? Hmm. Well, if, if he calls back, I'll ask who it is and...
Chris? Chris? Quite a place, isn't it, Miss Cornell? Like stepping into yesterday. It's a perfect spot for a private talk. So why don't you come on down and we'll work it out. If you're thinking of going for help, don't. It would be a big mistake. Mommy, where are you? It's all right, Chris. You do what that man says. Believe me, I don't like this any more than you do. I can understand you wanting to explain what you saw. And as a good citizen, you should. Ordinarily. But this isn't an ordinary situation. That's what I want to talk about. Miss Cornell, don't try to hide. Miss Cornell, don't be silly. You've got the wrong idea. Look. Don't force me to do something we'll both be sorry for. I just have to make sure you don't do anything foolish. And you got nothing to worry about once we come to some kind of understanding? A $10 tramp committing suicide. If you left it alone, there wouldn't have been any trouble for anybody. Listen, Miss Cornell, no one's been in this place for years, and no one's likely to be for a lot more years. So if you force me... Miss Cornell? Miss Cornell? Have you ever been blackmailed, Miss Cornell? Blackmailers are the lowest form of humanity. Parasites. I did society a favor. She found out I was into a few things. And she set me up. She was... She was bleeding me dry. Forcing me into other things. Things I never would have done in order to keep paying her off. I just... I just had to put a stop to it. Hey, look. I don't want to do anything we'll both be sorry for. That's not what I planned. You know, there's no need for threats, Miss Cornell. Our problem, <laughs> it can be solved easy. When I find out who she was, when I find out what she was, they're going to start asking questions. And it's going to break in the newspapers and TV, 
That's going to put a lot of pressure on you, Miss Cornell. And I just want to make sure you give the right answers, understand? Miss Cornell, it's up to you, you know. I can't wait here forever. And it's your responsibility if anything happens. Miss Cornell, you're being stupid. You know, you're pushing me into a corner just like she did. Either you come... Believe me. You know, it doesn't have to go any further. You just forget what you saw. And... It'll fade away. And then I won't bother you or Chris again. Okay? By tomorrow, she'll be declared an official suicide. And they'll drop it. And then you can have Chris back. Okay? Miss Cornell, you're being stupid. And I'm not responsible what happens. You're responsible. You're responsible. You're responsible. Chris. Mommy! Subway jumper? Yeah, it's your address. And I hope my getting Christopher back late hasn't upset the routine. Not at all. Well, I may be a little late picking him up tonight. Will that be all right? No problem. I'll keep him with me. Fine. And you'll keep him indoors and, and keep your eyes on him? Of course. Is there something wrong? You seem... No. No, everything's just fine. Thank you, sister. Please. Sergeant Withers. Yes, sir. There's been an accident. A man's been killed. Can I have your name, please? Sarah Cornell. Cornell, C O R N E L L? Yes. Your address? Well, don't you want to know about the man? In a moment. Your address? 1525 Albany. And uh, where is this man? Miss, that place has been closed for over 40 years. The doors are sealed shut. Yes, I know that. But not the one up on the fire escape. You got in through the fire escape door with this man, and there was this accident? How did it happen? He, uh, he kidnapped my son. He kidnapped your boy. That's right. But he's safe now. He's all right. Okay, miss, I'll send out a special unit to the theater. Will you meet them at the back entrance? The front is completely boarded up. Yes, I will. Oh, just a minute. You know who the man is? Yes, I do. Brody. Inspector Brody of the police department. What? Joe Brody? That's right. You mean Inspector Brody of Homicide kidnapped your son? 
Listen, I know you don't believe me. But but if you'll just just All right, calm down, miss. We'll have a car in the theater in a few minutes. It's, the officers will be glad to take down all the details. Thank you. suppose went on in here? Well, apparently Joan Castle didn't kill herself over money problems. Very few of them do. I'll check the other room. Mm -hmm. Sarah Cornell? Yes. I'm sorry we took so long in getting here, but we had to stop and get the key from the owner. This is private property. But the door to the balcony is open. I understand, miss, but I have a key from the main floor. I see. on the phone. It was an accident. Um, you see, a, a backdrop came crashing down from up there. And, and when he tried to get out of the way, he, he fell back into the pit about here. I see. He's, he's gone. Uh, he must still be alive. Or... Uh, or, or maybe somebody, those old men, maybe they took him away. Why would they do that? I don't know. But, but like I said, the work light was on. Now, uh, who, whoever turned it off. Isn't that about where you said the uh, drop crashed down? anyone. Brody's still alive. Don't you see that? He knew I'd tell the police. And he wants to make sure that nobody believes me. Because I saw him kill that woman this morning. Oh, what woman's that, miss? The one at the subway station. He knows I saw him. I see. Well, we'll report it, sir. just like you told it. You don't believe a word I've said, do you? Well, those other men, miss, uh, the two old men who saw what happened. You said you think they sleep here? Uh, yes. Yes, back there. Okay, let's take a look. Sure they sleep back here? Well, I... I assumed... Well, maybe the 
old men, uh, maybe they, they, they robbed the body and... And took it with them? Well, like I said, Miss Cornell, we'll make out a report. I'm sure the department will look into it and uh, search the theater thoroughly. Look, I did not imagine this. And I'm not insane. Yes, Miss. One thing is sure, Step, she wasn't the kind of girl you bring home to mother. Yeah, I already figured that out. What do you got? Porn, hardcore. Well, like you said. Yeah, but these are all of Joan Castle and friends. That's not all. Heroin? Could be. And with this much, she'd have to have good connections and be a big trader. My, she was a bad girl. This begins to look less and less like a simple suicide. Maybe that Sarah Cornell really did see Stop. something. Here's one you're going to want to take a look at. Thanks, I've seen enough of that stuff to last me a lifetime. Not like this, you haven't. Is there any doubt about who that is? No, I'm afraid not. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Brody. This is Walter Stepanek. How are you? Complaints? Is Joe there? No. I thought he was with you. Uh, yes, well, he was uh, earlier, but I thought perhaps he'd come home by now. I haven't seen him since yesterday. Oh. He's on some special assignment, he said. Yes, that's right. Uh, if he calls or comes in, would you have him get a hold of me, please? It's very important. All right, Walter. Bye-bye. Thanks. She has no idea where Brody is? Hasn't seen him since yesterday morning. This is pretty hard to swallow. Brody'd have to be awfully desperate. He'd have to be more than that. Sergeant Withers. Carl, it's Step. Has Joe Brody been by since this morning? Well, I haven't seen him, but Step, I sure have heard about him. What do you mean? You know that dame who claimed she saw someone push that jumper under a train this morning? The one you spoke to? Sarah Cornell? Yeah. You know, she ought to be committed. Maybe she's on something. Anyway, she called a while ago claiming that she'd killed Joe. What? Yeah, said he kidnapped her boy and took him to the old Winter Garden Theater. And she... Do you know where she is, Carl? Well, search me, uh... But it turned out to be a pipe dream. I sent a couple of the boys over to the theater and... There wasn't a single thing. Do you have a phone number for her? No, but, uh... I think I have her address somewhere. Yeah, here it is. 1525 Ogilvy. What's up, Step? Thanks. Step? This camera was set up in a niche behind the mirror in the bedroom. That's two-way glass. Worked by remote control. Blackmail, too. And that could be the way she hooked Brody. Yes? Is Sarah Cornell there, please? No, she's not. Isn't she working today? No, she's off until tomorrow. Where I can reach you. Who is this? This is Detective Stepanek. Oh, look, why don't you guys get together? I just gave it to another cop. Inspector Brody. I see. Well, would you give it to me again, please? Um, 364-5843. Thank you. Hello? 
Hello? Who is it? Who is this? There's no answer. Grab a cab and get that over to the lab right away. I'll go and check out Sarah Cornell's apartment. If you go to the police station, at least you'll be safe there. I don't dare do that. Brody's probably waiting for me just to do that. So he can find me. Oh, all right. Now, what about my place? I'll be gone tonight and tomorrow. You'll have the place to yourself, Brody. You'll never think of looking for you there. I'll be back tomorrow night, and we can work things out. Yes. All right. Now, I'll call Mr. Wharton, the building superintendent, and tell him you're coming. Now, you buzz him when you get there. He has an extra key to my apartment. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you. 300 North, Nicole. Right. Cab 1126, destination 300 North, Nicole. 300, Nicole? Right. Hello, officer. 300, Nicole Drive. It's an apartment house. All right, thanks. This is uh, not easy for me to believe either. Never mind the preamble, Stepanak. Where is the evidence that Joe Brody is a killer? I don't have any proof of that, Chief. I just bet you don't. Joe's supposed to be on his vacation, but he just happened to be here this morning when a call came in and decided to go along with me to question Sarah Cornell. The young woman who's supposed to have seen someone push Joan Castle in front of a train. That's right. And the minute she saw Joe, she clammed up, changed her mind, couldn't remember what she had seen. And now she claims Brody pushed the castle on. I'm inclined to believe her, Chief. 
This uh, model or actress or whatever she is, she also said that Brody was dead and that he'd kidnapped her child. Only it turned out that he wasn't, and he didn't. Obviously, she's more than a little unbalanced and seized on Brody as a subject for her fantasies. Maybe. We found this in the Castle Girls' apartment. Lad confirms it's top graved heroin, over $5,000 worth. I'm still waiting for some point of proof against Joe. Without all the rest, that wouldn't be quite so conclusive. The woman in the photograph is Joan Castle. You were uh, close to Joe for the last few years. Do you have an explanation for this? He's been under a lot of pressure. That's why Doc Ward insisted he take this vacation. I talked to the doc about it. He said that if it turned out Joe was in some kind of a tight bind, threatened. I've thought that Joe was living over his head for quite a while now. But uh, I guess he wasn't. But he has another source of income. It's likely the castle woman was blackmailing him about that. What about the young woman, Miss uh, Cornell? I've tried to reach her by telephone. She's not at home. No one seems to know where she is, so I put out an all points on her. Okay, Step. Put the word out on Joe. Step. That was good work. Yeah. I'll get right on it. The entire department is at your disposal. Use it. Manager speaking. Mr. Wharton, I'm Sarah Cornell. I believe uh, Maggie Knowlton called. Oh, yes. You have a key for me? Open the door when you hear the buzzer. Thank you. Operator, get me the police. I don't know who sent the flowers, Mrs. Grant. All I know is I'm supposed to deliver them to you. There's probably a card inside. Very well, then. Bring them up. Someone called on the intercom. I, I think he's downstairs. He might even be on his way up here. Keep your door locked. Don't open it for anyone. We'll be there as quick as we can. Detective Stepanek, Harry, urgent. Thank you. 
Nothing. You? What's the trouble? Hi, Step. What's up, son? Stolen delivery van. Where was it? Parked at the side entrance. How long ago? 10, 15 minutes. You got a make on it? Yep. This is my stop. I gotta get off here. No, please. Sorry. Please, please help. Step, that sounds like the same van that's been abandoned near the corner of Chalk and Olive. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, the license number matches. That's just down the street away. Thanks, Carl. Oh, and Step, Brody's car is parked right in the middle of the same street. All right, I want every available car to stand by. I'll get in touch with you and tell you where I want them. Right. I got through talking to a man at the newsstand. He said a girl got out of this truck and ran down the subway. A man followed her. It must have been Brody, because that's his car down there. Carl, a step. Yes, yeah, step. All available cars. I want to car at every subway entrance north and south of Chalk. We'll proceed north on Chalk. Right. Carl, make sure every officer in those cars knows what Brody looks like. Got gotcha. you. Thanks. Second car. He's looking through the window. Where is he? But he was there. I saw him. I know he was there. Look, why don't you get off here and find a policeman? I'm sure he can help you. No, but this is you... my stop. I have to get off. But don't you see? I, I couldn't get to anyone. I wouldn't have a chance. He'd get me before. But look, there he is. Look. I have to get off. I'm sorry, miss. Oh, no, please. Thank you. 
There's a young woman on the train in the first car. She's probably, well, not quite all there, but she insisted there was a man on the train who was after her. Did you see him? No, oh, she said he was in the second car, Thanks. but I didn't see him. Hey, dirt step. The car that checked Casper Street Station talked to a passenger who was apparently on the car with Sarah Cornell. Casper Street, that's next to the last stop on the line. She said there was a man after her, but the passenger didn't see anyone. She get off the train? Apparently not. All right, I want every available car to converge on the subway yards immediately. Let's go.
Farrell, we're at the car yard. We've got one unit back up and we're going in. I want you to send two units around to cover the south end of the subway yard. Good, Joe. There's nowhere to go. Joe, it's over. Don't make me kill you too, Step. Thank <laughs> you. 